Hello everyone, and welcome back to an all new episode of Listen Up. I'm sure you all must be wondering who I am. My name is Mohsen Saydullah, and I'm the Senior Manager of Admissions and Communications and Outreach Program. I know, that's a long title. Today's episode is about our Cedar Knights and their hard work and determination when it comes to representing Cedar at the regional and national level. We have with us Musawir from the DHA campus and Hassan from the BCHS campus. Hello guys, how are you? Hello. So, why don't you guys, uh, Musawir, starting with you, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, so my name is Musawir. I am also the president of the Student Council here at Cedar College DHC campus. Coming to myself, I consider myself a biology enthusiast. Apart from that, whenever I get time, I know the Student Council is a little difficult. But whenever I get time, I try to watch cricket as much as I can. These days, with the Science Bowl and with our, with our Student Council and everything, it's been getting difficult, but I, I would still love to watch the entire day of a test match whenever I could. And Hassan? Uh, my name is Hassan Raza. I'm from the media department of Sudan Council at PCHS campus. Uh, I'm a computer science enthusiast and I love playing chess and watching football. Okay, that's, that's great. So, uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the National Science Bowl. So, for your viewers, and including myself, by the way, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the National Science Bowl is all about? Okay, so the National Science Bowl, as the name implies, it's a science quiz competition. We have teams participating from all over Pakistan, from Karachi, from Lahore, from Islamabad, even from Quetta. And these teams participate in a multi-round science bowl competition. So what happens is that we first have the qualifiers. In the qualifiers, the top 16 teams from a region will progress on to the regionals. From the regionals, we have teams that progress on towards the nationals. And from the Nationals, we'll have one winner. And we also have the runner-up. Okay, that seems like a very lengthy process. Um, Hassan, what sort of questions were asked? And what was the format? Like, how did you guys qualify and go from regionals to the national? Uh, it's sort of a trivia competition. So there are short questions and then there are MCQs, short answers. So first you answer a toss-up question. If you get it right, then you get a bonus question. For the toss-up question, you have like five seconds to answer. And the bonus question, you have like 20 seconds to answer. But the first qualifier consists of 15 to 20 toss-up questions and the top 16 teams qualified as um, so we said. And in the regionals, the rule format was applied and then uh, one toss-up question is asked and the team that gets it right gets to answer the bonus question. And then the highest scorers, highest four, top four teams qualified to the national and the same format continue. Okay, so one thing that might not be clear is that two teams will at one point go head to head against each other. What will happen is that there will be room, there will be a team of five or six people at one side and five or six people on the other side. There will be a moderator who will ask you a question. The question is not displayed on the screen. We're about to come to that, but one of the major skills that the science board teaches you is not just science, it's the art of listening. Because the question is not displayed to you on the screen. When the moderator is reading out the question, you need to hear if it's a mathematical question, for example, you need to hear it correctly. You need to know what is what has been asked. For example, if it's a multiple choice question, you need to know what is what has been specified in each option because the, as uh, it is a quiz, quiz competition, so what happens is that the uh, options, the choices are tricky. So you need to be able to listen. So when two teams are going head to head against each other, there are five seconds to answer the first question, the toss up question. Whichever team presses the buzzer first, they will get to answer. For example, if they get it correct, what happens is that they get a bonus question for answering the first toss-up correctly. The first toss-up, for it you get 4 points and moving on to the bonus, if you answer the bonus correctly, you get a total of 10 points. So from one question, theoretically you could get a total of 14 points. If you get the first toss-up incorrectly, what happens is that the, that question is passed on to the other team. And then that team can buzz in and they can answer. Theoretically, if that team were to answer the toss-up correct, then they would get the bonus question. For uh, We have multiple rounds like this where teams, two teams would go head to head at the same time and moving on as matches progress, there's a pool stage and so on and so forth. And as matches progress, as points are calculated, you move on from the qualifiers to the regionals and then on to the nationals. Got it. So from my understanding, it seems like you, you have to be very attentive and uh, you know your focus has to be there throughout the whole thing. 
Uh, one thing, do you guys have like a notepad? So you said that there's no, uh, it's all spoken, right? So do you have like a notepad where you can make notes or no? Yeah, we, we do get the opportunity to write whatever we want when the moderator is reading out the question, we can write it down. We can write down the options as he's dictating. But again, the options, the choices are law. You cannot write down whole sentences when he's dictating, when they are dictating. So what you have to do is you have to write down key points that option A had this point, option B had this point, and then it's all about the presence of mind. It's about calculating past, it's about thinking past, and then answering the question correctly. Okay, that's great. So now we know how you actually went about it when you were there. So now, Hassan, why don't you walk us through the journey? How did you guys register? So first, uh, one of my friends came up, to, came up to me and asked, do I want to participate in the National Science Board? I was like, yeah, I'm up for it. So uh, we invited like 24 people from the Cedar College in a WhatsApp group. And then we divided those 24 people into four teams of six. Like we discussed among each other and uh, uh, asked each other's strengths and weaknesses and made up four best teams from Cedar College, unofficial. But from a WhatsApp group, we came up with four teams. And then uh, these four teams uh, participated in the qualifier and then uh, some qualified for the digitals and uh, we qualified for them. Uh, in terms of preparation, how did you guys go about that? So the National Science Poll themselves gave us some uh, material to study from. Like there were these famous books like Fundamentals of Physics and then Mathematics, there was Art of Problem Solving. So the material, sorry to interrupt, but was the material provided by them? Yeah, but uh, the material was provided, but it was very vague. Like there was a very extensive sort of material provided. Uh, so there was like university level stuff in that material. Okay. okay. So that material was not quite helpful for the competition itself because the competition required more practice than preparation. The preparation was quite basic, but the practice was the key skill to success, uh, have success in the competition. And what was the duration for like, you know, for each of these stages from going from, uh, you know, for re from registering to preparation, how long did that take? Yeah, well, it, uh, the competition, initially the first stage was the qualifiers. That happened around July mm -hmm. and then we had our region. From there, the team, 16 teams that progressed from the qualifiers to the regionals, they had the regionals in August. And then four teams moved on from the regionals to the nationals, which were recently held in September. So it was about uh, to sum it up a three month journey, which is only the duration of the competition. Again, the preparation starts long before that. Schools from all over Pakistan, they prepare six months before the competition is about to start. Okay, cool. All right. I know you spoke about the head-to-head -head matches, but in terms of the scientific scientific knowledge, uh, was it like predominantly like the facts that you needed to have in order to win? Or what What would you say, in, in, you know, besides just your knowledge, what else did you need, the X factor, or in terms of preparation to be able to win those rounds? Yeah. The key was to not go through all the books that had been recommended. The, the books were very extensive. And if a participant were to go through all of them, it would take them more than a year. So that is not the smartest way to go about it. There are practice questions available online. You can do those. for. Uh, you can just go on to Google and type in science board practice questions and there will be so much stuff to help you out. Apart from that, it is also it is a mix, mixture of both. Basically, you need scientific knowledge. You need to be smart. You need to be, apart from being smart, you need to be quick. And with that scientific knowledge, you need the presence of mind. The presence of mind is key. We saw a lot of very dedicated, very talented students who came up against us. And they could have beat us, but they didn't. Why? Because at that moment in time, they did not have the presence, in, uh, presence of mind to, for example, press the buzzer before us. To, for example, interrupt the moderator. And alert. Yeah. You, you, so you need to be alert. Okay. Um, okay, being Cedar Knights, uh, do you think that Cedar College as an institution did a good job in terms of supporting you throughout the journey in order to, you know, getting the runner, to get the runners up uh, trophy? Yeah, getting the runners up trophy was a phenomenal achievement. And to be honest, it would not have ever been possible without uh, Cedar's support. Cedar even funded our journey, most of, most of it, to Islamabad. And again, if we had not got that funding, it would not have been possible for us to travel over a thousand kilometers away. And win and be achieve the runners up trophy like we did. So yeah, Cedar's support was phenomenal, and we were in contact with our admin throughout. Even before the nationals were reached, we were given support through email, through everything else, all the mediums that are available. And the admin has been really, really nice to us, and the cooperation they gave us, 
and uh, the nice behavior that we got from them that was something that pushed us even further motivated us even further to do well and okay uh so hasan for you uh, with your experience you know being national runners up uh what would you recommend uh to students watching this video how should they you know go about if they want to take part in the national science bowl so like if you want to succeed in the national science bowl you need to start now like yeah we asked the winners of the national science bowl them to and they said that they have started their preparation back in december for this competition so you need to start now you need to put your passion to the test and you need to start your preparation do practice questions form a team form a team with strengths and weaknesses that can help you achieve trophy like you need to allocate at least one subject per person and divide the work amongst your team and then that person should be responsible for completing that subject in its entirety and practice extensively to be able to achieve success okay and what about in terms of preparation would you recommend that they also have mock uh, setups of the rounds and stuff like you did head to head to be you know to get a better feel of what the situation is going to be like there yeah there's absolutely necessary because many people they have extreme uh, a lot of practice like online and stuff they have a lot of preparation but they crumble under pressure so to recreate that pressure you need to have mock rounds you need to recreate that environment to be able to feel that pressure and see how you do under it. so once you are practiced uh, like you will be participating in the national science bowl you have a better sense of how the environment will be and how you have to deal with that pressure i must over to you what do you think when you know uh, forming a team what sort of uh, personality traits do you think you should look at while forming a team besides the knowledge obviously uh, but uh, personality wise personality wise i need i think you need calm and cool headed people because at the end of the day this is a long drawn competition it will last for over 3 months if you make it to the nationals so you need someone who is cool headed who is calm who is stable who does not get angry when practice questions are being done because believe me when you're doing practice questions there will be moments when you're like god i can't do this <laughs> but but you just need to keep going because again you're practicing right if you get one question incorrect you're learning something from that and the second time if you get that same concept tested again you could get it correct so you need to be calm and cool headed initially it feels very difficult initially it feels like uh, probably someone 5 years older than me could do this i cannot do this but the key at that moment is to keep going again go through your practice material go through even other books that have not been recommended go through simple online uh, learning resources watch youtube videos we did the astrology astronomy section by watching youtube videos because again the book recommended was a bit complex for us so what we did was we watched in, we binge watched entire youtube playlist to uh, so that we could cover our astronomy section so again keep your mind open be calm and cool headed and do not be afraid to use a wide variety of sources even if they have not been recommended because at the end of the day it's a science competition there is no fixed limit or no fixed outlined syllabus to it they could ask anything if it's related to biology obviously they won't be asking doctoral level questions but at your level you need to be having a wide scope of knowledge so basically what i'm understanding is you know you have to keep an open mind while preparing and go above and beyond okay yeah. and um, you know it was great to you know learn a lot from you guys about the national science bowl uh before signing off any final words of wisdom to people who are really uh, clear about you know and are uh, sure that they want to be a part of this what would your final words be to them yeah just form a team be calm and collected prepare for it practice for it and be confident because confidence is key uh, if you're not confident you will not be able to answer the questions you need to uh, make some guesses if you're not confident you won't be able to make those guesses so you need to be confident you need to prepare you need to practice and have your trust in allah and on top of that when you're forming the team please make sure that you are not just selecting choosing people in your team who are for example experts at computer science that will not help you what you need to have is a well balanced well thought out team where someone would be for example an expert in biology someone would be an expert in mathematics someone would be an expert in astronomy so what you need is a group of calm and cool and collected people and also a group that has a diverse range of specialities you need people who are good at every subject so that when a question is asked related to that subject that person can step up you would preferably preferably want to have one sort of all rounder in your team who can like do a lot of stuff stuff but you need to have specialized people so be careful when you are picking your team be careful when you are talking to your friends and 
trying to convince them to be in your team make sure that you select people that are right for the job you know you talking about this in my mind all i can think about is i don't know if you guys watch the big bang theory yeah. and uh, sheldon in the competition where he's hogging all the questions because he thinks he's the smartest and no one else can answer uh but um, you know i just want to say that you know you guys are making cedar college proud and uh, we're very thankful that you know with all the hard work and determin- determination that you put you know in this uh, competition and uh, honestly we wish you all the best for the future when it comes to uh cedar as well and uh, beyond as well so and that's it from us from uh, for this episode thank you for joining us and uh, i'll see you guys next time take care Lafayette.